Hi guys, it's Sam and I'm back with another video. Today I am making a card for the current Lawn Fanatics Challenge, which is a sketch. I used Smart Cookie, Push Here, Screen Time, Virtual Friends add-on, Virtual Friends, and then I couldn't decide but I do end up using Milo's ABCs and Violet's ABCs as well as the plaid stencils <laughs> and I do also throw in some Starry Sky stencil action. Oh yeah, I also use the chibi lights uh, to make it the card light up. I do struggle a little bit making it happen, but in the end it works and um, it actually works better than previous cards I've made in the past. So maybe I'm learning something? Question <laughs> mark? I don't know, but you tell me. <laughs> After all my images are stamped, I'm going to color them in with Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers like I usually do and you'll notice throughout the video those little dots of light from my window they move <laughs> throughout the uh, recording and it drives me crazy but <laughs> I pick up again the next day and they're gone so uh, they please bear with me and I'm sorry <laughs> uh, I started coloring this little guy's blue jeans and I was like um I couldn't decide what color shirt to give him right away, so I just went into his hair. I always <laughs> usually color hair in browns because that's all I can do. <laughs> I mean, browns or crazy colors like pinks and greens and blues, um, but I'm not very good at blonde, not very good at a red that's not supposed to be um, flaming. <laughs> so it's something I have to work on. So anyway, brown hair it is. <laughs> I did finally decide to go with green and I'm going to keep most of these colors um, when I'm coloring the images and cool colors except for the chair but um, because I figured at this point I was like okay for the background I knew I was going to use warm colors so I wanted to hint at a rainbow a little bit so I thought cool colors for the images warm colors for the background rainbow for everyone <laughs> Anyhow, um, just some simple coloring in the graduation cap and the diploma, and then I moved on to the gray parts of the chair. At this point, I still didn't know what color I was going to do the chair um, or the computer. I'm like thinking, 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 and then I just decided to go for gray. I was like, well, let's keep these, you know, the main focus of this card, besides the little graduating video gamer, is going to be the fact that it lights up. So. I knew I was going to have, you know, the slight nod to a rainbow color and our color scheme. So I was like, I'll keep try to keep the rest of the colors a little bit neutral. So gray for the computer, gray for the little video game device, the controller, the diploma, um, you know, that kind of thing. I thought about also making the desk gray, but I decided to go with brown. <laughs> um, here I am just coloring the yellow chair. I do start with a little bit of brown in the shaded areas to um, add more mm, contrast and uh, then light yellow and a little bit of water to pull it out. So pretty simple. These, a lot of these images are pretty tiny which worked for me but um, it wasn't anything. I'm not a master colorer. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just adding shading, you know, some areas that I wanted to. And then for the table, I just did a darker brown for the outside and a lighter brown for the drawers. And that was it. That's the coloring. Pretty simple. Uh, next up, I'm just drawing some dots where I want the blinky lights to be. I knew I wanted some to come through on the computer, so I drew a couple dots on the computer, and I'm using my teeny tiny little hole punch to punch the dots in the gaming console and the TV, or computer screen, my bad. And um, that way the lights can, you know, shine through and be bright. I'm also going to fussy cut out my images. And with magic, they're done. <laughs> and then I thought, okay, let's start the background. Um, I'm taping the stencil from behind so it doesn't move on me. And I'm using abandoned coral and dried marigold distress inks 
to ink blend and I thought I was going to keep it very crisp edges so I used this washi tape to um, partition off so I didn't have any color in areas I didn't want to. I end up totally throwing that out the window but at this point I didn't know. <laughs> um, so there are my diagonal lines and then I wanted to add some more color so same colors a little bit less pressure that light from my window is directly where I was ink blending. I could not see it was driving me crazy. So <laughs> I had a really blotchy blend and I decided to do um, what I call the packaging technique on top of what I ink blended. And what you do is I take a, a, a recycled piece of plastic packaging from stickers or something, uh, smush the ink directly onto there, spritz it with a little bit of water. I do dab up around the edges just a bit because I'm a control freak. And then I press it onto my paper. Really easy. <laughs> I really like doing this uh, distress ink, with distress ink obviously, but also on top of ink blended distress ink, it gives a really fun look. And um, I really like how it's like loose and not, um, you know, crisp and clear. While it was drying, I decided to ink, um, heat emboss part of my sentiment. Um, I do have a little bit of a boo-boo. I masked off part of the sentiment. And then look, I didn't take the masking tape off <laughs> before I stamped it. So here I go again. I'm like, okay, this time stamp it. Look, remember Sam, remove <laughs> the washing tape, the washi tape, and then stamp. And then <laughs> your mask works perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that was oopsie <laughs> I do that all the time so anyway um and there's the part of the sentiment I it's only part of the sentiment now my background is dry so I'm going to use the starry sky stencil and white embossing paste to add some stars because it is a graduation card so I do want it to be exciting <laughs> and oh hello there's my cat Sedona hello Sedona <laughs> She jumped up a couple times in this recording, and it was not at all frustrating. <laughs> I'm just using a pencil and pressing it through the hole punches I made through the images earlier onto my background so I knew where to make the holes on my background for the lights to come through. And I'm just going to use my X-Acto knife to make some rough little holes. You don't want them too big because they don't, you don't want the holes to come through behind your images, but... I wanted them big enough to, you know, shine the light through. So they don't have to be perfect. They're going to be covered except for the hole through the, that we hole punched on the images. Hope that makes sense. Anyway, I'm just lining up the background of the holes that I made of my card onto my card base and then using my pencil again to make the dots. And there's my cat again. <laughs> the dots on the card base are going to tell me where to place my lights. I took some con um, computer paper and cut it in a little strip, a little pocket from where my battery is going to live. And I put a negative sign on the inside and a positive sign on the other side. And then I just attach that to that little squiggle where I marked where the push me is going to be on my card front. Then I took the copper wire. I started on the inside pocket by the negative side and I'm just carefully making the copper wire go along the path I had drawn in pencil and being sure to make the copper wire come pretty close to those two dots that I drew through the image earlier. Then I'm going to take the copper wire and I'm going to start on the inside of the top part of the pocket, go along the outside, and then I'm going to use the copper wire to make a line parallel to underneath, parallel to the negative line that is underneath those two dots. Does that make sense? It's a little confusing, <laughs> but hopefully the video showed you, um, you know, what you want to know. Basically, the tips here are you do not want the copper wires to cross. Negative and positive should stay separate at all times. And you want the negative and positive lines to touch the lights in those little copper areas um, on those triangle shaped lights so that they can make a strong contact. That's the key here. <laughs> 
And now the really tedious part of adding foam tape to everything. I am constantly checking to make sure it lights up because I don't trust it. <laughs> it does though. It does. It, there, I shouldn't, I should have trusted. I shouldn't have worried, but, um, so I'm adding foam tape along everything. I actually end up doing double foam tape. Um, but I don't show the second layer because that's, I mean, this, it's the same thing as what you're seeing now. I also use a tiny piece of paper, again, just regular printer paper that can be thrown away. And I'm going to stick it in between the battery and the uh, piece of paper, the pocket, so that when you press it, it doesn't light up. Otherwise, this thing will be lit up you know, very easily. And I don't want the batteries to die before I give it to the recipient. So once the recipient gets it, they can pull out that piece of paper and then press it to their heart's content. <laughs> and okay, so what I did here is I'm just, I'm just gluing everything down directly to my card base. The only thing I did was I lined up the dots from my computer and gaming console to the dots I had cut on my card base, which lined up to the lights there. So everything is lined up. Everything else, it could go wherever it wanted. But as long as those, the two dots on the computer and the two dots on the gaming console lined up with everything, then we're gravy. <laughs> I'm using the push me sentiment. I'm just actually stamping pull here um, on that piece of paper that's going to slide in between the battery and the copper wire so that as mentioned, <laughs> it doesn't kill the battery while the recipient doesn't have it. And then I thought, oh shoot, I need to tell the recipient where to press. So I stamped the heart and the little push me into the middle of the heart. And I'm just going to color it in some, again, cool colors. It's actually like a tealy mint green. And I fussy cut it out and then attach that to my card as well. And now the recipient knows to push it. Easy peasy. And so cute. <laughs> it's the little details that really make this. And I'm glad I remembered to add the push me because what I don't remember to do until it's too late is to stamp directly onto the card, congratulations, before I attach it to all that foam. Alas, I did not remember. <laughs> so instead, I will heat emboss congratulations onto some vellum and I'm using both alphabet stamps I mentioned earlier the smaller size is going to be most of the word congratulations and the larger size is just going to spell out the word grad since it is a high school graduation card and I'm just going to heat emboss it onto some scrap vellum I had lying around and usually I would stamp it in black heat emboss in clear Forgot what I was doing, <laughs> stamped it in clear. Now I'm just going to use black. And uh, luckily I didn't have too many gray, too many um, stray black pieces. So yay. <laughs> and now I'm just going to attach with the Lawn Fawn glue that congratulations banner. Just tiny, tiny dots onto the, the letters. Um, this glue bottle is really nice. It doesn't like come out too fast. So you can do like the tiniest little bit. And I'm attaching it to my card. And then the other sentiment that we had heat embossed earlier is going to be attached right below it. Uh, can you tell this grad is a video gamer? <laughs> and there is the card in all its glory. You can just pull it out and look, it lights up. It works. <laughs> Thank you so much for going on this adventure with me. I hope you had as much fun as I did and you laughed along with me on this fun time. Bye.